Um, my name is Thailand Pham, and I'm a writer at People Magazine. I'm here with an amazing group of um, restaurateurs and chefs. Uh, we've plucked straight out of the heart of the food industry, and they're incredibly inventive and creative and amazing, knowledgeable people whose brains we're going to borrow just for an hour while we discuss this topic of um, Asian fusion. Like, what it is, what it's different, how is it different now than the Asian fusion you thought you knew, and how it's going to um, sort of change the culinary landscape. And how basically, start with what Asian fusion is. <coughs> and I mean, I feel like everyone has a different definition of it, whether it's um, fusing uh, cuisines that are Asian together or, or uh, Asian cuisines with different, with Western or Eastern um, cuisines. So please kind of describe like what you think Asian fusion is. For me as the chef, um, you know, we actually have Thai taco as well. <laughs> but uh, to, ex to explain to the foreigner who actually came to Thailand and then, you know, the way that we're actually making, um, basically, a just different form. And um, in a lot of Thailand culture, especially the royal king family, and then we have the royal cuisine, and then 450 years ago we have uh, Portuguese, which is came to Thailand and then uh, bring a lot of uh, uh, missionary came to Thailand and then they're teaching uh, how to cook, how to live our life and so on and so on. So we took uh, most part of their desserts to kind of like become a Thai dessert. So if you go to Thailand today, you will find a Thai dessert and then you go to uh, uh, Portuguese, and then you can find the uh, Portuguese dessert, which is actually similar, exactly the same, I probably would say. So uh, as the chef who cooking, you know, to uh, use different ingredients, I think that it's not really a fusion. But um, like example, in Thailand, we use a lot of uh, tomatoes in our somtam, which is green papaya salad we use. Um, um, chili, lots of chilies, which is came from the United States and then actually had brought it over. So if you count the ingredients, <coughs> um, you know, what is the uh, real food? So th all the ingredients, which is never actually uh, came from Thailand, it had uh, brought along the way from far away to come to Thailand, and we put all the dishes together, become like, example, green curry. Even Pad Thai is not a Thai dish. It came from China, and then we kind of like, um, Mix it together, become our taste, and then we call it Pad Thai. Same thing, uh, we call it um, roast duck and red curry. You know, we, we don't use oven to roast our duck. And uh, we actually borrow Chinese uh, roast duck, chop it in, and put in our red curry, become our red curry, roast duck. But anyway, I think um, a lot of things that Asian fusion, I think we we using different ingredients, you know, uh, from different countries, and then mix it together, become our unique. And um, I'm, I think the um, Asian fusion is not really a word that I really like to use because I think nowadays the chef creating on their own dishes, they um, changing, they they taking the uh, classic to make it more modern. So this is my opinion. I'm also very curious in how, much like you were saying, you've used your restaurant to educate, um, and not just fusion in terms of modernization, in terms of the very specific ways that you've all decided to make your restaurants, and what ways have you all um, tried to educate your um, diners, if, if at all? Is there something that you, know, you feel like your restaurant is bringing, bringing it specific, specifically to light? Um, well, for me, um, in the restaurants, like, uh, I'm opening, I, I did open the restaurant since 2004, and then trying to educate people here to eat something else apart from Pad Thai, because of uh, people coming into your restaurants, and then it was like, you know, we want Pad Thai, and then if you don't have the Pad Thai on the menu, you're not a Thai <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> and then uh, it's really hard for me because of, um, you know, this is what they do, like, you know, I, I work in my city restaurants in Sydney, and then open restaurants in Bangkok as a good chef in, in five-star hotel and then uh, now I know what I, I want to do my, my own way. Like my sister put the uh, um, green peas or summer peas, spring, spring peas, what you want to call them, and then uh, she put it into the green curry. So I asked her why you put the, spring, um, the green peas in the uh, green curry because uh, she said nobody will eat it. No, nobody will eat the eggplant, I'm sorry, um, the 
green curry, suppose you have like apple eggplant and then uh, brinjal or the um, berry eggplant. So there are two different types of eggplants they put in if you go to Thailand. And then it's kind of like really bitter. And then, uh, so I asked my sister why you put the sweet pea in there. And then she said, well, you know, nobody eat eggplant, so we put green pea instead of. So I said, this is not right, <laughs> right? So this is not right. And then, but again, like to go back, you know, who you offer, your clientele, and so on, so on. So when I opened the restaurants in New York, I, ha I did put the uh, eggplant. We had to bought it from Florida. And then the uh, berry eggplant and so on. It's really expensive. But to make it more traditional, and then you can change the, part, the other part, like, you know, they, in Thailand, they use, like, uh, cheaper cut uh, sliced meat. So we actually upgrade a little bit. We, we do short ribs, uh, beef short rib braised, tender juicy and so on so on and then I put like three pieces on if you don't want to eat it you just just remove it away and then but you know try to educate people here and then uh, to call um, uh, the name of the dish um, um, to be like familiar with uh, everyone knows like I think um, Italian is one of the most popular dishes uh, here in the United States um, in, in restaurants as well and then you mostly know like Capaccio View Tonato. So we I, I'm using the name, but we make it in a Thai way. We call it Bangkok style, View Tonato, or instead of View Tonato, we make Pork Tonato. So people are actually aware, oh, this is the thing that I'm going to get, but in a Thai way. Or uh, something like, you can't call it Pork Capaccio because of, uh, you know, Capaccio is raw. So uh, you actually have to use the right name to actually um, helping people to understand it because you're not, you don't want to put the picture on your menu. Uh, again, like different kind of restaurants. So I think I'm using the different name, borrowing the name to make it more like uh, people familiar with. Culinary idols or mentors or inspirations are in terms of having started your business. Um, is there anyone particular that you, know, you kind of drew inspiration from? Uh, for me, it's Mark Miller. He's the uh, <coughs> Southwest um, cuisine. And then um, I, I knew him since I was 23 when he came back from Sydney and then he came to Thailand so I met him there and then now he's like consulting for uh, P.F. Chang and then um, all the sauce and uh, executive uh, chef of the uh, consulting chef and also with the Coca-Cola company and, and he actually uh, teach me a lot of things and in terms of uh, uh, flavor, mixing up the flavor and, and also the uh, the business that he does. So usually I stay behind the kitchen, in behind the stove and cooking. So now trying to learn um, something like on the other side, which is like you can't be, uh, you know, um, put your face down and cooking, not seeing customer, and just really enjoy what you're doing. Which is I love anyway. That's why I decided to came uh, to come to the United States to open uh, the restaurants here. Then um, I think he's, he's just uh, a great man. I, like, I probably would say like he's the godfather of a uh, chef in the United States. So one of you guys earlier mentioned about putting pictures on the menu. It's a no-no. Just wondering why. Personally, I love seeing pictures. Yeah, me too. I, I love pictures. So you with but your I, eyes. Yeah. But I noticed that a lot of restaurants, they try not to. Just wondering. Well, I think, think uh, just different to your customer, like, you know, I, we probably would have uh, something like really simple. Uh, even though it's really simple, you can put the picture on the menu. And then I think it's just different kind of uh, business uh, restaurants criteria that you actually want to um, represent it. So in my restaurants in Bangkok, I have the uh, dessert restaurants, and then I put the uh, picture on it because of, uh, you know, they're really tempting. They want to see what is on it. And then uh, when you send it, it's not exactly the same. They send it back. It's like, have to be exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, of course, there are, I think the different criteria, I guess, a different criteria of the restaurants, what kind of uh, restaurant that you want to uh, put the picture in or something like, even though like uh, we, ex we have so many kind of noodles, I think same here as well, in, same in uh, China as well, so we have like different kind of version. You get different kind of stuff into the uh, uh, the dishes, and then you put the picture on it. So what you're getting on different kind, but sometimes because people actually doesn't know, especially like at the airport, they probably will put a lot of pictures on the menu so people know 
uh, when you're traveling and you know exactly what you want to get or uh, what you, when you see what you can what you're getting question is mostly for Vikas and Ian and as you're not American native and I was curious in terms of Vikas's restaurant here in New York what kind of changes you felt that you might need to make for a New York consumer and for Ian you having restaurants both here and all over the world like if I go into your restaurant in, in Barcelona say versus uh, Mumbai, like what variations, if any, are you making for those those cities? Because um, well, I had a really tough time to uh, open the restaurants in uh, Barcelona because of um, you know I try to use as less chili as possible, and then they say like they can't eat it. It's too like I blow their head off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know I had to uh, borrow Korean chili. A dry chili powder to make it uh, less spicy because of uh, they, if they eat black pepper, they say this is really spicy. And we have the dish like lemon glass and black pepper. So we, I have to every country I have to uh, to adjust the flavor into the uh, local people. Like if I go to Mumbai, and then the first thing if they taste something really sweet for appetizer and entree, they they they, they hated it because of uh, they like to be more salty, they don't like sour. So basically you actually have to know each country you go there and you open the restaurants. Because of, uh, it's it quite really challenging, but for me to open in, in Barcelona took me like two weeks, like really fast. I have a great team to open, but uh, the food I have to adapt it a lot. Like it's concerned about the spiciness. And then um, for Mumbai, they love spicy as well. And then, but for me, to, if you tell me to make it spicy, it's like Thailand spicy, and then they cannot eat it. So still, like you actually have to be really compromised in terms of Thai food doesn't have to be uh, spicy, or you know it can be. It had to taste great. It had to taste Thai, and then you know you can adjust the uh, uh, the heat level as much as you want. Like if you wanted more heat, you can add it in. But if you make it like powerful, like super spicy, and then they send it the guests send it back, and then you're going dilute, to dilute your food. That's what I think. Because of, uh, you, know, you try to put something else in. Example, like curry, you try to put more coconut milk in. So you diluted your food. So I think start it off, off like, you know, mild, and then you can actually adjust mm -hmm. to that. So, yes. 